Hi, Model Chili here, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at my Bandai TIE Fighter model kits. Now these are the 1 7 second scale snap together kits, so they've been out for a good few months now, and I finished them a couple of months ago. Um, I bought all three at once, just with the intention of doing a really simple Death Star trench run diorama. And but yeah, so this is the finished result. Um, now the first sort of dilemma I had when I bought these was I, I decided really early on I was going to paint them despite the fact that they're sort of pre-coloured or the, the moulds are pre-coloured sort of roughly so you could get away with not painting them if you chose but I decided to repaint them all from scratch just to give it a more universal look and feel. Um, would make it easier to put the decals down and the gloss and matte varnish over the top. So, so yeah, the, so the colours of the Tie Fighters change quite a lot in the movies. So they start off with this sort of um, warmish grey, light grey look, and then they end up a co much colder, sort of bluish grey, in episodes five and six. So, even though I prefer the look of the later Tie Fighters, I decided to stick with the the lighter grey. So it closely, more closely matches the TIE Fighter scene in Episode 4, which I uh, studied again in sort of references of studio models in the actual movie itself. So hopefully it's, um, to, it's a sort of a close approximation of the actual colour. And uh, by coincidence I primed them all up using Tamiya's uh, spray can primer, which I usually do with all my models these days. And so, pretty much ended up bang on the right colour so I just left it at that and then just painted the rest of the details over the top so all the wing solar, the wing solar panels and the canopy frame they're all painted just uh, with the matte Vallejo paints and yeah so we'll have a closer look at actually this is the first one I built and being the first one, it was kind of a, a test bed of sorts, so there is a couple of um, things that I corrected for the second for the second round. Um, for example, the the wing frames are a separate moulding to the actual panels, so they sort of lay on top. So I painted those separately and stuck it together. Now the thing with um, these snap together kits is that they're designed to snap together and stay together, so wanted to snap this on, I realised it was on actually on upside down and some of the uh, the pins weren't connecting right so I um, had to force, because it was really stuck on there, I had to force it back off and in doing so I accidentally scraped some of this ribbon detail with my fingernail it's about there and up here so this ribbing is really delicate which was um, unfortunate but it was a mistake that I definitely did not repeat the second time around. So yeah, so once that was painted, I gave a black wash just to pop, make all this detail pop out a bit more. Some really nice detail there. And the main body was given a sort of a grey wash as well. I wasn't quite sure how far to go with the weathering on these TIE Fighters. Um, I kind of figured that's the, life, the average lifespan of a TIE fighter isn't that long, if, if the movies are anything to go by. So these wouldn't really have much chance to get all beat up, but I gave it a sort of a light weathering. And you can see some of the ancient detail there. All those colours were just painted by hand. And a few decal panels there. One of the cool things about these kits is that they so closely resemble the studio models that you can actually pick out parts from other models that the ILM team used when they were making these back in the 70s. So for example this piece here is the suspension bogey off a Sherman tank. And so if you turn it around this way you can actually see there the wheels will go each side of that on the tank. 
So it's a cool little detail that sometimes you can pick out of these kits. And yeah, so once the painting was done, I um, gave it a gloss coat for the decals and then a matte varnish. And it's kind of ended up with a sort of a sort of a light semi-gloss coating. And for the stand, there's a nice chunky section of Death Star at the bottom, which is modelled off a real um, section of Death Star from the real studio model. And I've just painted the stand black just so it merges in with the black background. And yeah, so. Oh, and the kit gives you options for the canopy to um, have the clear plastic in there or just leave it empty. I decided to leave it empty just to replicate the look of the studio models which didn't have any reflective surfaces in there. And there's a full detailed interior. So the pilot's in there and there's a couple of decals for the pilot's helmet. And there's the flight columns and instrument panels. Bit hard to see now, of course, since it's all closed up, but this in there. Um, if I could probably shine a little light, you can just about see the pilot there in the back. And yeah, so that's the first one done. And second, of course, is basically the same. I decided to uh, not do any weathering on this one. So this one is fresh just off the factory line and because I've learned my mistakes from the first one there's less uh, blunders as well. So yeah I was quite happy with how that one came out. And yeah it's virtually identical to the first one as you'd expect. Okay now moving on to Darth Vader's TIE Fighter Advanced. There's a special TIE Fighter. Um, we've got a couple of laser bolts coming out there, so these come with all of Bandai's Starfighter kits and they're detachable, so I just put them in there just to change things up a bit, but those can come out. And yeah, so I Weathered this one up a bit more than the previous two. Um, my reasoning is is that this TIE fighter has its own hyperdrive, so Darth Vader can fly around the galaxy hunting down the Jedi and everyone else the, uh, the Emperor disagrees with. And so yeah, so he'll be flying through planets, atmospheres and asteroid belts and all sorts, so I kind of uh, muddied it up a little bit. Um, it's probably a bit more weathered than the actual version from the movie, but just wanted to give it a bit more character. So you can see some sort of streaks going along the back frame there. And this, all this really nice detail along the back spine. It's just given a, a grey dark grey wash and all that recessed detail. And again, just hand painting some of the extra panels like the engines and other bits and pieces. So we've got the same underneath. And yeah, so you know, the solar panel wings on this TIE Fighter is all just one piece. So because I'd painted it all from scratch, I had to mask off and repaint all of these panel lines. Which is a bit more work than I was hoping to do, but it had to be done, unfortunately. And some of this recessed detail in the front was all uh, hand painted. And yeah, so again, we've got Darth Vader pilot in the back. Darth, Darth Vader pilot. Darth Vader sitting in the back there. Now he was moulded in shiny black plastic, so. All I needed to do was get a flat black paint and then just paint his cape and a few more other bits of his outfit. Just to give that mix of plastic and cloth. And the stand. Again, a chunk of the uh, Death Star. 
Now what I did with the stand was that was painted black just like the the uh, support there and then just painted grey, a couple of shades of grey at different angles just so the black um, creates a bit of highlighting effect with the shadows rather than just having it all flat grey and they are positionable stands so you can take this apart and place it at various angles left and right and front and back which um, makes the display look a bit more dynamic yeah so that's the advanced so like I said these were really simple quick builds went together really quickly and easily um, if you don't bother painting them then you could probably get them done on a weekend yeah I was quite happy with the result in the end despite the couple of blunders on the first kit but overall um, I set out to make a really sort of simple and cheap Death Star diorama and I've mostly achieved that um, I have put up a video previous video of the Y-Wing Starfighter that I've um, recently bought and haven't started yet so once that goes together um, we'll go with these and make the display build the display up a bit I'm really tempted to get an X-Wing um, if I can still find one out there um, you may or may have not heard the news that these Bandai kits are no longer available for international buyers outside of Japan um, I suggest go reading up I mean I'm not that knowledgeable, knowledgeable about the subject but yeah um, something to do with international licensing rights and Bandai stepping on Rebel's toes a bit so yeah so um, I was lucky enough to get these kits from Hobby Link Japan before all that happened so yeah I didn't have to pay too much for them but yeah getting an X-Wing now might be slightly more difficult and a bit more expensive but we shall see so um, yeah so I hope you've enjoyed seeing those and yeah, until next time, I'll uh, catch you later.